courtesy of the red, white, and blue. It's time for Veterans Issues, the show that brings you information about veterans, military, and their families. Now here's your host, Ken Rock. Welcome to Veterans Issues. Appreciate you tuning in today, getting close to Christmas time. Got a great guest on here today. I've been trying to get this done for quite a while. His name is Ross Winter. And he's going to talk, we're going to talk about Israel. We're going to talk about everything. United States Army, even 82nd Airborne. Be right back. Get you a pen. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. Ken Rollins. We're, today's guest is a great friend of mine for a long time. And uh, his name is Ross Winter. He was with the United States uh, Army, an 82nd Airborne. He's a business owner. Got a place that's called Love Stuff. And he's my guest today. And we're going to talk about a lot of things, including Israel. Welcome to the show, Ross. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate it. I like that shirt you got there, the Commander of the Wounded Warriors of Alabama. Yes, sir. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. All righty. I want to get some background. I'm not going to take you back to anything you don't want to talk about. <laughs> Any bad stuff in your life when you was a kid, 15, um, when you moved through that rock through the window. That's when you right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we, <laughs> you, are you local? Are you from here or are you just landed here? My wife's family was from Alabama. And uh, when, when she retired, we moved to Oxford, Alabama. And that's, wow. we've been here almost 20 years. And you've been, you've been married for a few weeks, haven't you? Uh, 41 years plus. Wow. I was, when I found that out just some time back, I didn't know you'd been married that long. I knew you'd been married for a while, but I didn't, that's, a, that's a lifetime, 41 years. And uh, I see you, you had pictures and stuff on Facebook with her, different places. Mm -hmm. Y'all live in a pretty good life. You've been blessed, haven't you? Yes, we have been very blessed. Very blessed. Yeah. I see you on places that I, I've heard about. But, <laughs> but uh, you got how many of your businesses do you have in uh you got some in Florida too, as well. No, as just just, just Alabama. in Alabama. I sold my entities outside of Alabama, but we have six stores in Alabama to include a distribution warehouse, a corporate office, and a real estate division. Great, ain't done bad for a country boy. Well, I, I appreciate you to, uh, that, and I appreciate what you do for others. Uh, one thing about anybody that knows Ross Winter knows you got a big heart. You, Thank you're you. a little softy, ain't you? A little bit sometimes. <laughs> yep, sometimes. <laughs> we. we we had a, uh, there was one of the things I wanted to talk about here was you, when you was in the Army, you know, they build planes to fly in and stuff. I always made fun of you guys that jump out of perfectly good airplanes, but you was with the 82nd. And uh, what were some of your services, you, exotic places you got to serve? Well, I was with 82nd uh, as a young soldier, but I got to go to South America on a couple occasions, Arctic warfare, desert warfare, and I got to do a couple of reforgers. Uh, before being stationed in Germany. And uh, then I had uh, a very good assignment at the uh, Pentagon and at the um, Walter Reed Army Hospital. Now, when you said, you say that real fast, it's like saying $100,000 real fast. It don't sound like much, but when you say the words reforger to an old soldier like me, people don't realize what I was involved in that. You're playing real time war type situations in Germany. Correct. What's, it is that, a, uh, what's that place up there uh, on the, you remember the, City is up on the German line. Bremerhaven. Bremerhaven. Or, yes. Oh, yes. mercy. That's, yes. And do it in the winter time. Yes, Ooh. we do. Yes, though they still they still do a minor version of uh, reforger, but it was a real world threat uh, with Practice. Russia coming through. Mm -hmm. And until President Reagan uh, had the wall taken down, um, we always worried that the Russians was going to come through. Absolutely. The full the gap actually. I was over there in '69, uh, I believe it was when. And some of that, there was a there was a fear that they were coming through that that wall, and they they played the the, the war games, if you want to call that. I, I always had a problem calling war games because they were they were trying to to prepare for the real thing. You can call it a game if you want to, but they they were playing tactics is what they were doing, just to pretend or imagine that the enemy is coming through here. What do you do? How do you react to that? And uh, they didn't know. They didn't know beforehand what was going to happen, and they've tested commanders to see how they would react, including you guys dropping out, dropping out of planes, flying through there. It was troop movement. It was an opposition force. And any time you go to uh, play war games and they give you real ammunition, oh, yeah. real lifetime ammunition, and tell you that you got 30 seconds life expectancy if the, if the balloon goes up, and uh, we were just a delaying force um, initially, 
in which uh, they expected 100,000 of us to uh, perish in the first one minute. When you were said South America, where what was you doing there? Was that just practicing too, or is that was that part of the drug deal at the Jung jungle warfare? And then uh, for a uh, drug task force when yeah. Reagan first went in. Yeah, that is uh, you came in right after Vietnam, but that the jungles down there provided the same cover for the drug cartels as as uh, they did for the enemy in Vietnam. Too. Absolutely, absolutely, it was horrible. Yeah, horrible. So you take some of the from each war we learn. We learned things that we can use further down the road. And and when we came out of World War II in Korea, we were talking about coal in the mountains and that kind of thing. We didn't face a jungle situation that much, except in the Africa thing. But but when it got into Vietnam, it was a whole different learning process of the, the water, the rain, uh, the constant wetness of the boots. So y'all were able to use some of the things learned in Vietnam, I'm sure, down there in South America. Well, some of our instructors were Vietnam veterans and, and knew, you know, just the, you would think that water should not be a shortage in the jungle, but it is, yeah. especially when you get high up into the mountains. And food, you'd think it wouldn't be a shortage, but it is. Yeah. And it was, it was a very tough course. That was, tough. One of our, that was one of our biggest things. I, t I told a group down in uh, Lionville that went over to uh, Iraq, you know, Desert Storm, so they took a water company over there. Those guys had fresh water, even from the ocean. And we had to put a pill in our iodine. <laughs> well, yeah. Iodine. Ooh, yeah. uh, awful yeah. taste. Uh, yeah. You yeah, know your what water I'm tasted like medicine. Yeah, that was our our water was out of that pill. And uh, and you, if you took a shower, you had to be careful because if you had an open cut on you. Do some of the things that was in the water was was uh, was really bad. Yep. Uh, we uh, you you now you have bringing your brought your service to the country down to the level of uh, when I was talking about your shirt with the wounded warrior, Alabama wounded warrior. I want to make a distinction. This is not the wounded warrior of the national wounded warrior. This it is, is Alabama not. wounded warrior. It is. Um, the, the, when the national program had troubles about a year ago, and I saw that they were probably heading in that direction, uh, we started, uh, I and my wife started Wounded Warrior Alabama, and anything that we get here as far as money, we try to return 90% of it back to the service members, veterans, or the Wounded Warriors, where Wounded Warrior program gets about 28% of every dollar back to the veteran. And um, like I get no pay, um, the fundraising gentleman named Bill Williams, he gets paid out of my pocket and he works for minimum wage, uh, where some of these people work for 30 cents of every dollar they take in. Mr. Bill Williams does not do that because his father's a disabled veteran. So you don't have any people living in fancy hotels or flying a plane around to no. misusing money that was designated. I love no. that because uh, I'm a recipient of uh, some kind people with this track here that I've got. You know, Bill O'Reilly and some others have uh, involved with Wounded Warriors back when. Now they're with the Independence Fund. Uh, with Gary Sinise, you know, with a uh, good man, uh, good man. They have they're doing some great stuff, helping some. You know, people do get a benefit from it. And and what are some of the things we got less than a minute, but it, but we're going to continue on about it. what what's some of the things that y'all do for it? Well, our goal is not to buy track chairs or a home. It's we have a veteran right now that he he just can't pay his light bill. Right. He's got a job. He's got a wife and three kids. His wife lost her job, and he needs two hundred eighty eight dollars to pay his light bill. So we're going to pay it for him. Wow, that that's what I wanted to hear. We got to go to a break. Come back. We're going to talk more with Ross Winter. Stay where you are. You learned something about him you didn't know. Be right back. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. I'm still Ken Rollins, and I'm still talking with Ross Winter. And we were talking about uh, the wounded warrior, Alabama wounded warriors. And you said something near and dear to my heart about paying the light bill of that guy. Uh, this is something I think, because I call my home Veteran Central, because my phone rings all the time. Uh, somebody needing help a lot of times. Uh, broke down interstate or whatever, stranded here. There's no entity out there to help people like that. I mean, right. I promise you there's not something here in this town. There, there's not, and it, it's, it's a shortfall in the system that you may not have 90 days to wait and get money. You may not have that kind of time. And a person's light bill or, um, we helped a soldier that was, their wash and dryer kept getting repossessed because mm -hmm. they couldn't pay the monthly, right. the weekly payment to rent a center. So we went and bought them a washer and dryer and we put a five year warranty on it. And 
and we just told them you can't sell the washer and dryer, it's yours for five years, and then they donate $20 a month back to us, which is something they can afford, and uh, it was just something simple, but very important. Wow. Well, you need a dryer, <laughs> washer and dryer, man, it's uh, your world stops if you don't have one. See, we've had, I've had situations where uh, a fellow was on his way to South Carolina, you know, coming down I-20 here by Oxford, and his muffler fell off, and it bounced back and hit a car in the grill. Guess what that car was? Yeah. Alabama State Trooper. And he says, you're not driving on my highways anymore without a muffler. So he made him get off of Cost him 160 bucks. He didn't have it 164 dollars in his pocket. No money, and we got to. I got the call. We put him on his way, and a couple hundred dollars to go to South Carolina. But this guy was. That was something. There's no system out there when mufflers fall off. Call one eight hundred whatever. And, and another one, a young couple on the way from Oklahoma to Fort Bragg had an accident up here, totaled their car, and they didn't have any money. No way to get on to Fort Bragg. Had to be there the next day. And I got a call from the chamber. It says, who do we call? It's they ended up, he got there. But, I mean, that there is, like I said, something, something good to have something like that Ken, with you guys. thank you for recognizing that there is a, a problem and a shortfall with the system. And, and the situation is, is that, that every day um, people that serve their country, you know, 22 veterans kill themselves every day. That's just amazing. And my suggestion to fix the VA would be to make the Senate and the Congress use the VA system. Yes, they could pass the law to do that. <laughs> it would fix a lot of things, but we have veterans that can't make it to the VA clinic because they don't have transportation, mm -hmm. they don't have money, or they don't have a driver's license. Uh, you know, and you take a homeless veteran and give feeding him a hot meal and a place to bathe and shower is a big thing to him. Well, see, the <clears throat> I've had a lot of people seen the directors on here, the various directors of Birmingham, and I've known them and the ones in Montgomery and other places. Their hearts are in the right place, but they're limited under a government system as to what they can and cannot do. Like Correct. letting them use a local doctor, they have the choice program. But when they did that, initiate it, they did it for the right reasons, but they initiated it wrong. You had to be 60 miles from here. Well, there was people that lived 40 miles from Birmingham had a problem getting to Birmingham. Correct. And if you couldn't get over, you couldn't make your appointment to go back to your transportation. Program. But the VA don't have to furnish you a, a vehicle. They'll pay you travel if you're service connected. Correct. But they don't give you a vehicle. And then if you got a vehicle, sometimes you're not able to drive. They don't pay you to pay a driver. So there's a lot of things, and we don't we can't blame a certain entity. It's just that there is no there's a there's a block a hole in the system that don't allow for that, so it takes people like you and, and other organizations. There's a lot of organizations that could step up and do this stuff, not just the wounded warrior. Well, the, the, the situation that, that, that comes to, to mind with me is that it just takes a little bit of money can go a long ways yeah. versus millions of dollars going a short ways. And uh, we, you know, we help the veterans, we help the people with disabilities, we help uh, wounded warrior. And um, we have uh, donation boxes that are slowly being put out. They're in an American flag holding box on a black stand. And uh, it has a toy soldier on it. It says, take a soldier home for a donation. So people pick up a toy plastic soldier and they donate a dollar, but they take a soldier home. And that dollar, that one dollar, 90 cent of it goes to another uh, service member. I think we got your phone number on here. Uh, it's uh, 256. You don't mind me giving us that, do you? Uh, actually, we can give this one right here. All right. Yeah, let's do that because it, it's 844-GIVE-WWA. Yep. That's 844.GIVE.WWA. That's Wounded Warriors, Alabama. And uh, one more time, 844 dot give g i v e dot w w a and uh that that way you can help coming christmas time that'd be a great thing to know that you know i've had like you was talking about the people with their power cut off and things like that uh 288 dollars is a lot of money when you don't have it you know it's a it's a lot of money and and for our veterans that uh, need help 
there's sometimes there's just no place for them to yeah. turn. There is no place for them to turn. And again, you know, it goes back to the 22 suicides a day. And people don't realize it. Those 22 suicides every day are not veterans that are homeless. This is a father of three that takes his life because he can't provide help. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and, and there's a thing in the veteran community out there that they tell them, if you wasn't in the picture talking to the husband, the soldier sometimes, if you wasn't in the picture, your wife could get X number of benefits Correct. As a single mother, but you can't get him alone to y'all, y'all married. So he feels like he's a, a burden. Honor, honor death, you know. And uh, there's so many things out there costing at 22 that we could spend a whole 10 shows doing. And uh, But we just got to have people be understanding. And coming up on the Christmas season, I mean, this is a great thing here. If somebody wants, people calling me, what can I help? Who should, I got this thing in the mail from this company. I got this from this. And, and this is a great thing. I'm going to recommend the, the Alabama. See, we're talking about Alabama wounded warriors. And uh, what I'm not hearing from you or what I'm hearing is that you're not looking at the wounded. They have to be wounded. They just need help. This they need to be a veteran. veteran. They need to be a veteran or a spouse of a veteran. Uh, um, and it's local money. It stays right here. Yeah. It yeah. stays right here in Alabama. That's, and uh, Insight Magazine gives us free rent free phone use um, to uh, house the one guy. And uh, we have... Uh, and I'm going to give you a free rent here on this airways from now on. So well, I'm going to keep you. this. Thank you. And we get we got a couple minutes. I want to make sure before we run out of time, I'm rushing you there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about... You go to... Uh, one of the things I want you here today is talk about uh, going to Israel. You go to Israel not just to go sightseeing, but you go over there as an Israeli soldier. What do you call that? Well, I'm with a program called SARL, Soldiers of Christ, and you go over and uh, you volunteer and you live on a military base. You eat in the mess hall, you wear a military uniform, and you work from 6 to about 8 o'clock every night on a military base. And then you're off Friday and Saturday, which is their weekend, and you go back Sunday morning and you're back to work. And it's and you don't get paid. Well, but you don't... Uh you don't get paid for it, and you can just tax deductible, I think. Correct. But I've seen some pictures of you over there working. It's like uh, you're in an encampment. I mean, it's uh, you're you're really doing the, the real work. Oh yeah, we're on everybody. we're on a military base. I've been to Circuit 55. I've been to a base called Blue, and uh, it is like an army base here in this country. Only thing is, we're there volunteering, and if I specialize in handling ammunition. That's what I've done. If you're a doctor, they can use you. Yeah. Well, he brought me some some olive wood. I can't show you all this, but I got that, and I appreciate that. But we got less than 30 seconds. I just want to say, you know, you're an artist too, and I've been looking at some of your art. Do you take uh, do you take calls? Somebody say, I want you to paint this. Will you do that? No, I'm not certified yet. Okay. I'm still a student. Hey. Well, but I do like pretty it. Good. Well, thank you. Well, we got to go for a break. I I honor you, man. I appreciate thank you, what Ross. you're doing. Thank you, Ken. And, uh, and I want all the folks out there to remember that number because uh, coming here at Christmas time, let's, let's help some of these folks. Just, you're doing good work, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank I, you. Again, I'm honored that you're on here. We've got to go to a break. Come back. i got news that you can use. Stay where you are. Get this. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. Ken Rollins, and I appreciate Ross Winter coming on doing the show today. Now, let me give you this number again because I gave you some numbers, I mean uh, letters instead of numbers. So the number for... Alabama Wounded Warriors is, uh, Wounded Warriors of Alabama is 844-448-3992. That's 844-448-3992. I want you to call. I want you to do something this Christmas. Uh, you heard what, what Ross is doing, and it's for Alabamians. And uh, somebody that's in dire need, a veteran, or the family's in need, that's an that's a outlet. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's frustrating when somebody get a call like that. And I got a, somebody needs a ramp built to their home or something like that. They can't access it. I got nobody to call. I've had them where they they call and said they're out of food. They have no food at home. I got nobody to call. And so it's a blessing to me today to have somebody like the, the Alabama Wounded Warriors on here to talk about things that are helping our veterans out here serve this country. Uh, I'm going to talk about Toys for Tots now. That let me write this number down real quick. Two five six. 310 256 That's Dan Long, uh, the Marine Corps League. 
and um, he'll put you in touch with the folks that need to. The Toys for Tots has run down here at the last hour now. As we're t we're doing this show today. Uh, he wants to put the word urgent that they need those boxes filled up. We got kids out there that, and they got bicycles and all these things doing. But I guarantee you, I have been the recipient to get some of those toys to take somebody that I knew that was hurting the law enforcement officers. And they loaded them up. The only Christmas these three kids had was from the Toys or Toys for Tots, and uh, they they got a great Christmas. Most kids didn't get what we took them out there, but it was a result of this. So I know it works. It's a great uh, great organization. You can recognize the boxes in some of your big box stores and other places. If you see Toys for Tots, help them out. I got a call from from a DAV. The Armor Meat Company is going to be giving out. Uh, box of cans and cans of uh, vein of sausage and uh, I'll give you more on that later because I don't think of vein of sausage unless you're fishing you got uh, night crawlers on your hands and red wiggers and then you grab them crackers of vein of sausage but it is something for veterans and uh, I want to tell you about that uh, need still need power chairs if you know someone that's got a power chair they're not using I got veterans that uh, need a chair to visit their neighbors up and down the street and go to their mailbox, but they're not eligible for one through the VA or Medicaid or any other system. So if you've got one that the person no longer needs and the batteries are still operational, let me know, and I'll make sure that the veteran gets it. And uh, let's see, um, the Kia stores. I, I, Don Hobson and all his folks at the Kia store sponsored the show every week, and, and uh, that they're on South Quintard and they're over in Gadsden and they give 20% off to your first responders, uh, first, uh, for first responders and for the military and veterans. So on service and parts, that's a worthy thing. Of course, Don, he's uh, he like me on Ross Winter here. He's ex-military and so uh, that's one of the reasons he's doing it. And let's see what else I got there. Remember, getting your new tag this year or any year, that uh, law enforcement tag goes with any vehicle you got. You don't have to be in the military. And uh, it shows that you support the fallen uh, officers. It's a great, great deal. It helps us out a lot in uh, building their memorials up there in Centennial Memorial Park. So uh, think about that when you go get your next tag. And uh, let me see. We'll be building the Afghanistan memorial hopefully next year. Uh, if you well I'm running out of time so this week I'm gonna go salute somebody that I got a lot of respect for what they're doing in the community and doing for our fellow veterans and his name is Ross Winter this salute goes for you Ross and we're out of here we'll see you next week